try and squeeze in one more book review before the end of the year because that's just who I am. So you're welcome. Hi guys, it's April and I'm going to do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I'm going to have the non spoiler section up front followed by the spoiled fill dump afterwards in case you don't want to spoil yourself. But of course, this is a judgment free zone. So if you want to spoil yourself, spoil yourself. I will also note that I received a copy of Code for Love and Heartbreak by Julian Cantor for a free and honest review, but that in no way swayed my opinion on this book. I just thought you should know. So the Code for Love and Heartbreak is a Jane Austen retelling, Emma specifically, but in this case, we have an Emma who is more geared towards numbers rather than people. And then we have a George who is part of her coding club. Now here, Emma is a senior in high school. Her sister Izzy has just gone off to college clear across the country, and she's starting to feel the loss of that constant companion. When Izzy left, she made an offhanded comment of possibly building herself a boyfriend. This year, Emma wants to win the national coding competition so she can put it on her resume and get into like any school she wants. So she's hyper focused on that. And she decides that she's going to build an app that pairs people up mathematically for the perfect love matches. So already we are deviating from the original Emma story, but I do like how we are making Emma more of this analytical character, more of this character who's struggling to understand emotions because in the original Emma story, Emma has a social way about her, but she doesn't always understand people's emotions. So here we've kind of taken out that social aspect. We've added that cluelessness, but at the same time, we still have Emma trying to match people up, but for more for her own benefit than for the benefit of the people. I will say I like the inclusion of Jane in the story. We didn't necessarily see a whole lot of her in the original Emma, but here she is added into the coding club. I like how they did Sam and Izzy and George, and I like how the story was modernized. There were points in here though, because of how disconnected Emma was with her own emotions, the buildup between Emma and George felt a little weird. And I almost started to ship Jane and Emma a little bit more than anybody else, which was a very interesting place for me to be at, but they just seem to have more of this connection in the coding club than anybody else. But I really loved the development aspect of this story of watching this team build this app. And part of that might've been because I am so much in that world. That is where I live. That is what I do that I connected with a lot of those pieces of building the algorithm and doing the interface and trying to get people to adapt this technology. And then I've been part of these coding competitions before. So I knew how they looked and feel and all of that kind of stuff. So I really like this retelling. It's definitely not a retelling for everybody. Cause like I said, Emma is very disconnected from social interactions and basic human emotions. She's just not built that way. And that's why I connected to her, but not everybody is going to feel that way. But if you do like retellings and you do like Jane Austen and you do like the story of Emma, you will probably really, really enjoy this story. So do I recommend it? Yes, I thought it was fun and cute and it came to me at the perfect time. The end of the year is the last book that I read and I'm going to read and I think I'm ending on a good note. So this is the point in this review where I'm gonna to switch to the spoiler section. So if you don't want to spoil yourself, this is when you leave. But also if you know the whole Emma story, you probably know how all of this is going to go down. So choice is yours. I don't really have a lot for this section besides the fact that it, the connection between Emma and George, the standard relationship in this story, there were little hints here and there of that building up. And I know that's kind of how the original story does it as well. But like I said, I found a bigger connection between Jane and Emma than I did between all of the other characters, especially when Jane finally opens up about the reason why she always wears her lab coat, the reason why she's always covering up and the scars and the accident 
and how all of that has made her feel and all of those things. And then she has this friendship, this personal connection that she's never really had with anybody. Emma hasn't ever had with anybody besides her sister. And that's, I mean, she's had it kind of with George and we're more told about that connection than shown like we were with Jane, which might've been why I started seeing those two together more than Emma and George. But I am glad that the, she still took the traditional Emma path. It's just, it's interesting how that can kind of happen depending on who you give more screen time and more mental capacity for the character and how that can kind of skew what the reader is reading into your story. I don't know. Am I the only one who kind of started seeing that? I mean, tell me, tell me down below if maybe you started seeing something like that. I am open to being corrected, but that's just kind of where my brain went. But overall, this was a very good story and I really, really enjoyed it. So that is kind of where I'm gonna leave all of this. It's been a good reading year and this was a great book to end on. And of course, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe, hit that bell, do all of the things to get the notifications and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.